Have you ever watched a sports movie and thought, there is no way that would happen? No way could a player get that good that quickly. How can a dog keep his shoes on for all four quarters of a basketball game? Even the true story seemed too good to be true. Then there's Kurt Warner, undrafted grocery bagger turned Hall of Famer? Now that's a story worth telling. In 1994, undrafted Northern Iowa quarterback Kurt Warner was cut by the Green Bay Packers. Don't worry, the Packers had their own Hall of Fame Wrangler wearing gunslinger and Brett Favre. This sent Kurt Warner, you know, back to his hometown of Iowa. He's training during the day. He's doing drills. He's trying to be the best quarterback possible so the NFL teams are interested in him. But at the same time, he needs that night job to keep the lights on. So he works at the local Hy-Vee supermarket. He's, you know, bagging groceries and pushing carts just because he knows that if he can do this, maybe one day he'll be able to have his NFL dream. At 5.50 an hour, this was not exactly where Kurt was looking to stay, but it was a steady income and gave him the flexibility to continue to pursue his dreams. Seven months later, the Arena Football League announced an expansion team was being put in Des Moines, Iowa. Kurt Warner was in the right place at the right time, but he'd also been preparing for this opportunity for months and months on end. In 1996 and 1997, he was named first team all Arena League and was really the best quarterback in the entire league. Being a dominant Arena League football quarterback, a lot of NFL teams started noticing this. So in 1997, he actually signed a contract with the St. Louis Rams. The Rams didn't believe he was good enough to you know, play in the NFL at the moment. They wanted to hone his skills a little bit. So they actually sent him to NFL Europe to play for the Amsterdam Admirals. Two years later, Kurt Warner, he's still with the St. Louis Rams. He'd been bouncing between NFL Europe and the NFL, but now he was finally gonna be the backup quarterback. Week three of the preseason, Trent Green, Injures his knee, he's out for the year. Now, a lot of teams would have you know, brought in a veteran quarterback or tried to get somebody with a little more experience, but Dick Vermeil, he, he did believe in Kurt Warner. And this is the same coach from the movie Invincible that you know gave Mark Wahlberg a chance to make the NFL off the streets. In a post-game press conference after the injury, Dick Vermeil was quoted as saying, we will rally around Kurt Warner and we will play good football. Little did he know this would be the birth of one of the greatest offenses of all time. Today, the idea of four wide out sets and having these super, you know, pass first offenses and just going down the field, that seems just like a normal Sunday for a Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. That's, that's just the way it is in the NFL these days. But a big reason for that was the greatest show on turf. Before they existed, really most teams would run first and then pass here and there. If you're a big basketball fan, one way to really look at it is, you know, the three pointer existed before Steph Curry came to the NBA, but once he was shooting at such a rapid rate, it changed the league. If you look at the NFL today, it is highly influenced by the greatest show on turf. Mike Martz was the mastermind behind the offense. He was calling all the shots, making all the plays. Hall of Famers Marshall Falk, Isaac Bruce, Orlando Pace were all some of the biggest weapons, and of course, Hall of Fame finalist, Torrey Holt. From 1999 to 2001, the Rams had the most passing attempts, they had the most yards and the most touchdowns in the NFL, and it wasn't even close. In Kurt Warner's first year, he took home the NFL MVP, and he took the Rams all the way to the Super Bowl. Kurt Warner has been part of three of the most memorable Super Bowls in the last 25 years. The first one was Super Bowl 34 against the Tennessee Titans, where at the end of the game, you know, it's fourth quarter, it's tie game, and Kurt Warner hits Hall of Fame receiver Isaac Bruce down the field for his 73-yard touchdown catch. Now, this puts them up seven. It's, you know, a big, big deal. And there's only a few minutes left in the fourth, but the Titans still have time and they drive the ball down with, you know, Air McNair passing the ball left and right. But the game ends in a crazy way with a pass to Kevin Dyson. The receiver catches the ball and is stretching as far as he can towards the goal line. It becomes about a yard short on the last play of the game. Kerr Warner had a, a monstrous Super Bowl, you know, passing for 414 yards and two touchdowns. He won the Super Bowl MVP, and he is the last person to win the regular season MVP and the Super Bowl MVP in the same season. In 2001, Kurt Warner won the MVP once again, and he took his team all the way to the Super Bowl to face a relatively up-and-coming team in the New England Patriots and their unknown quarterback who got an opportunity through injury in Tom Brady. The Rams went into Super Bowl 36 heavy 14-point favorites. Everybody was picking the Rams. This was really before Tom Brady and the Patriots were Tom Brady and the Patriots. This is what started their dynasty. And the game ends in, let, you know, stop me if you've heard this before, a game winning Adam Vinatieri field goal. After the Super Bowl, Kurt Warner began to struggle. He wasn't playing at that MVP level. He wasn't even playing at a starter's level. 
and he was struggling so much so that this quarterback that had just gone to two Super Bowls and won one of them was actually cut by the St. Louis Rams in 2004. After that, he signed with the New York Giants to mentor then rookie Eli Manning, aka the Tom Brady Slayer. And at this point, nobody really believes in Kurt Warner anymore. He was a a great story for a couple of years, but he's not that Kurt Warner. That guy is long gone. And in 2005, he actually signed a contract with the Arizona Cardinals. Kurt Warner's time in Arizona it wasn't all pretty from the start. You know, he struggled, he had injuries, he was benched multiple times. Before Kurt Warner's 2008 season, the Arizona Cardinals had only won one playoff game in the last 60 years. This was not a team known for, you know, winning playoff games, Super Bowls, none of that. But when Kurt Warner took over, everything changed. They had two great wide receivers in Larry Fitzgerald and Anquan Bolden. And Larry Fitzgerald and Kurt had one of the greatest postseason runs ever for a quarterback and a wide receiver. The Cardinals had the motto, shock the world, because nobody believed in them. They had a washed up quarterback and a team that had never really been that great historically. Similar to that first Super Bowl with Isaac Bruce, Kurt Warner hits Larry Fitzgerald for a 64 yard touchdown to put the Arizona Cardinals in the lead with less than three minutes left in the game. Now this should have been the, you know, the game winning drive to give Kurt Warner his second Super Bowl, but instead Ben Roethlisberger and their Pittsburgh Steelers drove down the field and with 35 seconds left, he hit Santonio Holmes in the corner of the end zone with a toe tapping touchdown to win the game. After this heartbreaking loss, Kurt Warner decided to play one more year, but after the 2009 season, he decided to hang it up. Eight years later, the Cinderella story got the ending it deserved, a bust in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Kurt Warner's story shows that even if you uh, have a dream and nobody believes in you and it seems like the odds are stacked against you, you can achieve that dream. And not only that, if you achieve it once and people think you're a, a has-been or you can't do it anymore, he proved that you can achieve it once again. Uh, thanks again, guys, for checking out the channel. I appreciate it and thanks for watching. Peace, peace, peace.